Hey, good morning, Jack. This is Jonathan, and this is a cold call, but please don't be nervous. You're going to do great. Oh, hey, hey, Jonathan. Uh, who are you with? <laughs> hey, man. Um, well, I don't think it matters too much who I'm with. It matters more whether or not I can help you. Um, if uh, you're open to it, I'll spend the next 30 seconds just kind of sharing the reason I'm called, and if it resonates with you, we can keep talking. If not, I'll let you get back to saving the world. Uh, sure. Yeah, go ahead. So the uh, reason I'm reaching out, Jack, is that a lot of the sales leaders and enablement leaders that I've been speaking to recently have been sharing variations of the same theme, which is basically that they spend a lot of time making sure their team has the right training, the right knowledge, the right information. They get taught about the right behaviors, the right sales process, the right techniques. And yet when they watch recordings in you know the recording software, they don't generally see more, a whole lot of those behaviors showing up on real calls. And they're left kind of scratching their heads wondering, what do you got to do to get sales reps to actually change their behavior? So I'm curious to what extent that resonates with you. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. Like, I think we put together training programs, put our reps on them. Um, but I've seen, yeah, a lot of my reps kind of not making changes even after giving them coaching. Yeah. Do you mind if, uh, you might have to take like 30 seconds here to do a little thought experiment. Sure. So imagine they turned to selling into an Olympic sport and imagine they assembled a team, of some great sellers, and they started training these great sellers. What additional steps do you think they might take on this Olympic sales team to make sure those behaviors that were being trained on were actually showing up on real calls? It's, it's a good question. What, what have you got? <laughs> it's a fun question to think about. Well, one thing that comes to mind from looking at real Olympic teams and how they practice, but also from looking at musicians and actors and heck, even athletes and how they practice or how they train. There we go. I just gave the answer away. And how they train is that they use practice, right? Practice is that middle step that helps to convert what's known into what can actually be executed. And the company I'm with, the Practice Lab, actually has ways to help salespeople practice their sales-specific behaviors in a lot of those same ways that we see other disciplines practicing their skills. So I'm curious if that seems interesting enough to you to be worth, you know, taking 30 minutes to, to have a get-to-know-you call sometime later this week. Yeah, so just, just confirming, it sounds like you're with kind of like a group, um, you're doing practice. Is this with a bunch of companies or is this kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing? Yeah, so right now the Practice Lab has a handful of different offerings, some of them tailored to, you know, individual hand-raising AEs who want to practice, and some of them tailored to organizations who want to bring practice to their whole sales team. Which do you think might be more applicable to you? Yeah, I think, uh, like, the training we have is is all within our own company. I know that my reps talk to other SDRs from other companies, but we kind of like to keep it uh, our methodology, what, what we're training. Um, I'm assuming, you know, this costs money or is this like a free membership for sales reps? Yeah, so this does cost money. And our approach is basically to work on the fundamental human to human communication skills that make for great selling. Uh, we're actually entirely methodology agnostic. So for example, some of the things that we work on with reps is curiosity and listening and how they word their questions. But we don't necessarily tell them what question to ask because, of course, that'll be different company by company, industry by industry. But we're basically focusing on strengthening the neural pathways in their brain that will allow them to become great question askers regardless of the framework. So for your organization, how much practice is happening with that training? Is there any at all or no? Yeah, I would say to your point, it's more on the methodology itself, not necessarily right. like the, the human behavior around it. Um, is there like a time commitment thing with this? Because I know my reps are just swamped twenty four seven. Yeah, so we can we can structure that um, based around your needs. Of course, they do need to take the time out to practice. But as far as when that happens, how often it happens, we can adjust that. It sounds like there might be might be some interest here. Um, do you think it's worth exploring in a full conversation now, or uh, or would it be a better time for us to talk more at length? Um, would you be able to maybe shoot me an email? Cause you kind of caught me out of the blue here, uh, kind of like a high level so I can take a look at the website, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to send you an email. What kind of information do you feel would be most helpful to be in that email? Uh, like I said, just kind of high level overview, like the work you do, um, a little bit about the program itself. 
You know, at this point, Jack, we're a, we're a young enough company that's not like we have a, a whole pile of marketing materials pre-made. I'm happy to write something up if needed. But, you know, in my time doing cold calls, I found that more often than not, when I send these emails, eh, they just kind of get drowned in people's inboxes and never looked at again. Uh, is this something that uh, you really want to look into further or are you more just trying to get off this call so you can get back to it? Um, no, I, I think there's like a, I'm curious to learn more. Um, it's just not like a burning priority. So what, what would you do in that situation? You know, what do you yeah. recommend I do? Yeah. So I think in that case, I can send you an email with a bit more information, uh, link to our website, etc. And then you and I can connect maybe in a week just to kind of see what your thoughts were on what you looked over. And, uh, you know, again, if it warrants a more thorough evaluation or not, would that work? Yeah, I think I think a week is uh, plenty of time where I can take a, a look at this and see if there's more interest. Cool. Well, I'll work that up later today and send it over. Um, a week from now, that would be November 1st. So what would be a good time for me to call? Um, wide open. All right. Well, how about we speak at 10 a.m. your time? Let's do it. Cool. And you mind if we make it Zoom instead of a phone call? Uh, totally fine. All right. Shout out to Jonathan, one of the co-founders of the Practice Lab. Check them out in the description below for being kind enough to share this killer cold call recording with us that resulted in a booked meeting. I jotted down my favorite parts of this cold call in my notes app. As every great cold call start, he started his cold call with a permission-based opener. Once he gained permission, the next phrase out of his mouth was the reason I am reaching out. Prospects urge for the reason you're calling them on a cold call. You need to give them the reason. Every great cold call has that phrase, the reason for my call is somewhere in the beginning of that cold call after gaining permission. If you're not incorporating that phrase today, start incorporating that going forward. Next, the problem that he delivered after the reason for the call was very, very crispy. It was a problem that he thought might resonate with this prospect because it resonates with most sales leaders Jonathan speaks with. As much detail you could provide in that problem statement. Incorporate as much detail as possible. As Josh Braun says, make it very, very crispy. Then he followed up that with the question, to what extent does that resonate with you? That question, I have not been asking that question on my cold calls. I'm going to start incorporating it. That's actually a question I ask every day when I'm demoing my product that I sell for IBM. After I share a feature within my product, I typically will ask, to what extent does that resonate with you? Start incorporating that question after your problem statement towards the start of your cold calls. Then, after he got a response that it did resonate, he said, you mind if I take 30 minutes, or 30 seconds, excuse me, to do a thought experiment? He's gaining permission again with a time constraint. You need to keep gaining permission after the prospects allotted time they gave you is up. So he got 30 seconds at the start of the call. He used those 30 seconds up. He then asked for 30 more seconds. It's a professional courtesy. Keep asking for permission as the time runs out on the previous permission that they gave you. He received a few objections, wasn't defensive at all. The best part of this cold call, the tonality and pacing. It was calm and friendly like he was talking to a friend. Calm, friendly, slow-paced. And then I loved how he handled the send me an email objection. That is how I handle that objection. Chris, listen, I've been doing this for a really long time. Typically, when I send an email over to someone like you from a cold call, I never hear from them again. It gets in the spam folder. Is this really something you're interested in looking into? If not, no worries. I can hang up and we can move on. That's how you handle that objection because you don't want to waste time writing up a cold email. Jonathan didn't want to waste time writing up a cold email here that wasn't going to get delivered. And because he pushed back just a little, little bit, persist, professional persistence, we like to call it, he pushed back a little bit on that objection. He got a meeting booked a week out. Jonathan, thank you so much for sharing this live cold call with us. Guys, if you want to check out other live cold calls on this channel, check out these two videos right here. They are killer cold call videos. 
that resulted in booked meetings like Jonathan's. Thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate it.